services and our ambassadors, uh, Harbor Days and that, and that, that kind of, and our, and our marketing committee, which is uh, uh, helping promote ways that the chamber can get back into the community and promote the chamber to the community. And uh, I was fast, wasn't I? Yeah, very good. Uh, any questions? You can't leave the room until you sign up for membership, by the way. Did they tell? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, our, our base is uh, three, th th I'm sorry, what's the base membership charge for a, uh, uh, a business? Uh, depending on how far you want to go, but our base membership is 315 plus a $40 app, one-time application fee. Um, we have ways that you, with that, you get on a, an adv advanced web listing on our website and, and, and a lot of other, other things too. It goes up from there to, depending on how much more you can get. We have on our events, some of our members want to do what we call a, a package program. Where they they want to be really heavy into education. Uh, for example, uh, last Thursday night at our education dinner, uh, we had uh, over almost $25,000 in sponsorships from folks. They were helping us out, realizing that that money is going to go toward education, toward the, toward the kids. Those businesses buy that through, as part of their membership, that they want to do a package for a table, or for events, those kinds of things. So 315. Anything else? Can we stretch it out? We got, we got, we got, you're not leaving for another 30 minutes. No, I'm just teasing. Jim. Yes, sir. Uh, the app fees one time, forty dollar app fees one time. Okay. I'm I'm I, I'm sorry, sir. I did not hear the question. Correct. Well, it depends on what, what your question is. For example, I, if you have a complaint with a business locally, this is a, this, check, check on it. I'm, uh, if they're business, if they're members of the chamber, we'll help you, definitely. But we're a membership organization, if that's your question. No, sir. No, it's, it, we're, we focus on our members. That's what we're there for, for our members. Uh, that's a that's a great question. Uh, the question was, uh, what types of businesses in the city are are doing well? Okay, um, some of the manufacturers are. We're seeing that. Um, the there's no question. Uh, oh, I don't know whether you guys knew this or not, but we're, we're kind of in a recession. We're having <laughs> we're having some difficulty in the business community. We are too. Uh, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm seeing more and more of the uh, startups, the small entrepreneurs that are, are, for one reason or other, they're either downsized or on their own or they decided that now's the best time to get into business. But uh, uh, we're seeing a lot of that, a lot of growth. Your interest here today is indicative of, of this is where the business of the, of the city of Oceanside is gonna be coming out of this room and I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Um, manufacturing, retailing is a little tough, depends though. Restaurants, are, some of the restaurants are doing dynamite. Really, really well. Never had better years. It's 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 up and down. It's like you know. How, how about the tourism side of uh, uh, tourism has always been good. I mean, we live right next to a huge, gigantic, wonderful pond out there that's not going away. Uh, it's the middle of November, and I, my wife was talking to her sister who lives in Connecticut, and uh, there's still a third of the state that doesn't have power back there because the last ice storm they had. We don't suffer from those issues. Uh, so we're always going to be a, a, a wonderful place to come and visit. Uh, we just had uh, a huge uh, Bike the Coast, which was a great opportunity last Saturday. 
1,400 people came down there. So tourism is here. It's to say we're seeing some good growth. We need to, uh, uh, I personally feel, we need to get that darn hotel built down by the pier as quickly as possible. Uh, but that's a political <laughs> issue. Um, so there's some great opportunities here. Tourism is vi viable. Uh, every Thursday morning, um, I just looked at Rick, every Thursday morning go down to uh, the uh, Pierview Way where it was packed with folks for that farmer's market and the Sunset Market at night. You know, people are... Sports and recreation. Oh yeah, we're, we just uh, the city is, is working with a, a, a developer to turn El Corazon into 20, is it 22 or 24? I some soccer fields out there it's, it, with Surf Cup this coming is going to be fabulous for the community. So there's some great opportunities for growth. The, the Marriott's opening. We're cutting ribbon on that on Thursday. We're seeing a lot of ribbon cuttings. That's a that's a good thing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, David, very much for uh, your presentation on the Chamber of Commerce. As a former president of the Chamber of Commerce some years ago, I can't say enough about what the Chamber does today also for the business community. The networking that takes place on this, not only locally but internationally with through the tourism and so many different ways, just their sundowners, just the opportunity of talking with different people. They're in business just like you are and it's amazing the amount of sometimes just one conversation can solve a small problem or a major problem just by the, the networking on that. Is Kathy Baker here? Yeah, oh, Kathy. Kathy, there was a question and they would like to have it answered and uh, I think you're going to be fielding the question and also I think there was a question on mobile carts, possible food carts maybe. Kathy Baker is redevelopment downtown area. Um, it's interesting that topic just came up recently, um, being able to serve hot food out of vending carts and it was brought to our city council's attention that currently we do not allow for those unless you are actually in a structured environment like the sunset market, the daytime market or beach services. With that being said, uh, city staff is working on doing a city code amendment to allow for those, and I'm not quite sure. I think it's due to go back to council within the next uh, 30 or 60 days. But again, as um, was stated earlier, uh, they, you have to have your food prepared and operated out of a licensed facility. Again, you can't cook out of your own home. So hopefully that answered the question related to food carts. No? They, years and years ago, they prohibited hot food from being served out of carts, and we're going to reverse that, and we're going to start allowing for that. And you'd have to go through. Food carts are becoming very, very popular. The mobile food carts, and and there isn't really a dividing line that people want to say gourmet food carts versus food vending out of any kind of mobile structure. Um, falls under the same category. And again, as Jackie said, it has to be operated out of a kitchen. The food has to be prepared out of a, a, a licensed facility. But um, those are very, very popular all over Food Network. In fact, Kyle, we, that, that was what uh, uh, Kyle and Esther Sanchez actually brought that to city staff attention. Why don't you allow for these food carts anymore? Why don't you change the laws? So that's what we're doing. So. Public health had a lot to do with it at the time, but this was years ago. Let me tell you, all our construction guys are always complaining that they can't get a, a decent hot meal on a construction site, so we're looking to change that. Again, no, it's within the next 60 days that it's going to be going before the city council, and it looks like we have a probably unanimous support from the city council to change those rules. Jerry, you want to, anything else to add to that? No, it's a city. It's a city code. Repeat the question. 
sorry, could you repeat the question? A mobile um, selling liquor out of a mobile cart? No. I don't think they permit that. <laughs> I'd vote for it, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't count. <laughs> That all falls under the ABC, the Alcoholic Beverage Control, and they're the ones that have the strict rules on that in conjunction with the police department. You know, that would be some, a question to ask afterwards outside with all of the different department heads, and they probably could answer that question on that for you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I'd like to uh, just let everybody know that KOCT, our local television station, has been recording this today, and uh, it's also going to be live within the next two weeks on our, on our Oceanside um, uh, City Hall site. But in the meantime, the PowerPoint will be being posted within probably, what, 24 hours or so? It will be the PowerPoint for today's will be. So you can access it right through the website of the city uh, websites on that. Uh, the Small Business Development Center is setting up appointments in the lobby as we speak out here. Also, there's contact information for everybody who spoke today. There's a sheet out there and some of the other department heads that uh, uh, you'll be able to pick up a contact sheet and their links and telephone numbers are on that. And I'd also like to uh, thank Tracy Bolin and uh, Patricia Moser for putting together a lot of the hard work for this through the economic development, uh, all of the hard work that you've seen up here. <laughs> Patty, who's standing in the back, put this together. And and Tracy worked hard on this in conjunction with everybody. It was a great team. I'd like to thank all of the uh, participants today, the speakers. One, one suggestion I'd like to make for everybody, and it's not even on this particular program the way it is, Christmas is just around the corner. We're all worried about trying to create jobs and to keep money in our own community. I can't think of a better thing than Christmas cards. You go into the, our local stores and buy a gift card and you're keeping it in the community, whether it's restaurants or whether it's the gift shops or whether it's for gas or whether it's massage or whether it's for a hairdo or maybe something for your wife or your husband, ground to golf. It's all kept in the community. If, if every one of us in the community went out and just bought a couple cards, think what the jobs that that would create for our community. So I think that's really important if we can all kind of consider that when we're thinking about those Christmas gifts for everybody coming up. And I wanted to also say one thing in closing, that Oceanside is open for business. We're, we are business friendly. It may not seem that way all the time, but we're doing the best we can to, to help you. We want you to start your new business. We want your businesses here in Oceanside. We definitely would like to see you be part of our community and to have other people in the community be able to use your businesses and, and worldwide, really, for depending on what it is. But we are here. We wanted to welcome you. and get the word out that Oceanside is business friendly. With that, we have lots of people that are gonna be out there to answer your questions. We thank you all very much for taking your two hours this morning for coming in, and we hope that this has been beneficial for all of you, and we thank you very much.